How's it going there, everybody? It's Mr. Zen over here bringing you guys a brand new Tower of God chapter discussion. And for today's segment, guys, we're going to be talking about is chapter 346, folks. Season 2, episode 266, folks. As yes, we are finally getting more deeper and deeper into the hidden floor. As there are more things that are actually popping up. As we can see that this is actually becoming, it's going to be another long arc, folks. Just to see Jahad, or the young version of Jahad himself. Which I personally am thinking like, I think this is the author's way of kind of like, making this arc a little bit more exciting for the side missions that are going to be going around. So, props to, to, you know, to the author doing that. But you know, at the same time, it's like, hmm, what is he going to do? What kind of enemies are going to be facing up there? And and what is, what why why are there so many freaking traps and everything? Just to go see Jahad himself, man, we all know that Jahad himself, I mean, just even getting to the hidden floor itself is a very difficult task. So even doing more difficult tasks is just, it's, to me, it seems like, man, this person must really, really be determined to see Jahad himself in this hidden floor. Because to me, it's like, you're, you're practically spending a lifetime being in this floor. Because there's specifically why I'm saying that, folks, because as... Our main heroes, Bomb and Dorsey, you know, they're talking to uh, Han Song Yu, and basically they're, you know, they're doing their own thing. They're going around and they start explaining the rules of the actual hidden floor itself. There, yes, folks, there are a lot of rules in this floor that to me it felt like, my God, it's like a never-ending video game quest, folks. Jesus, it's like one quest after another. It's like Bomb's overall entire mission just has so many sub side quests. That to the point that, like, are they all even going to connect? Like, that to me, that's just hilarious. But at the same time, it's like, man, this is going to be a long arc. You could already tell just the way this, this is kind of written. But besides that, I'm digressing. So, you know, Yang Hansu is explaining that, you know, at the balance, the balance that they saw in the beginning of, of the actual arc, you know, it actually makes a, an image and it shows the a person's actual you know, the, their strongest enemy of some sort. So basically, the hidden floor has this defense mechanism where people, everybody that comes inside this hidden floor gets to have their their biggest storm enemy attack them in case that this, the, you know, the people inside this floor, in case they kind of unbalance the, the ecosystem that's in, involved inside the hidden floor itself, which is kind of very smart to it the same way because bomb or any irregular that comes in here would then actually have a strong enemy that would be opposing them in order for there to be a balanced ecosystem, which I think it's very interesting because that means that this floor also makes it a challenge for whoever, anybody that comes in, not just irregulars, but irregulars, doesn't matter who, even the 10 great family. So it's, there's all this place is always going to be balanced out no matter what. Now that is very interesting because, you know, when you go inside the other parts of the towers that we haven't really come across that kind of system or involves that where you're, you're always going to have a, an enemy that's just as strong or stronger than you, which is very, very, very cool. And for, and for some reason, we finally see that bomb. Ha, we've seen that who bombs actual greatest enemy was. And yes, folks, it is none other than bomb himself. Or the thug version of Bomb with the long hair, folks, with the long friggin' hair. Juvial Grace, folks. Oh, yes, folks. Pardon me if I'm not pronouncing it right, but yes, he is Bomb's actual greatest enemy. And I personally find that very interesting because Bomb always sees himself as a, you could kind of say, as a very opposing force. That I think personally at the same time, Bomb sees himself as a, a hindrance to a lot of other people because he's so far ahead that sometimes it feels like he might actually be hurting his friends and family. You know, that's very, like, to me, that, that's the way I kind of see it with Bomb's actual character. As they kind of explained it in this actual chapter, because uh, you could say that Bomb's, you know, like, data that came up to attack him, they started fighting, which I thought, I love that in this arc. It was very cool seeing that they're just going at it. You just see freaking Julia Grace doing the Blue Fury, you know, the little, the little a circle of Shinzo that he stands on and, and roams around to move quickly and avoiding enemies. It was pretty cool. But the thing is that very made it very interesting is that Yahan Soong was going to try to attack Julia Grace. But to me, it's like, whoa, you know, Yahan Soong is a data. And to me, it seems like him trying to get involved in, in fighting in fighting bombs, you know, like you could say his his counter self is kind of irrelevant at the same time because he's just the data. It's not really like the information is gonna go to Yahan Soon's actual self 
So everything that's going to be in this floor, it could technically kind of be hidden unless, you know, the characters themselves go outside, you know, they, they make it out outside and they only talk to the people that, are, you know, that actually were involved in the hidden floor. But other than that, like I said, you know, seeing Yang Hansun actually, you know, like just seeing it, like seeing that fight against them, it just to me, it didn't really, it didn't really seem really relevant. It would have been very interesting, but it's just, you know, it would, it would actually show the the power difference with Bomb and Yang Hansun. That's what I, I actually liked about it, the very huge power difference. But no, but to me, Yang Hansun right now, I don't know, like this young self, it seems he seems very, he's still logical and he's still, and he still tries things a couple steps ahead, but he doesn't have that that calm, very very ominent demeanor that Yang Hansun had on the second floor. You know, if you guys notice, like, there's very two where you could tell Yang Hansun, he very, very, he, he's not as mature, but in the sense that, you know, like, this guy, like, he must have been through, like, some kind of, like, a dark road or something because, man, just look look, look how happy Yang Hansun looks in this data form. His younger version just looks more jolly versus the second floor one. It's like, he's jolly, but to the point that's like, He's very meticulous into everything that he does, including his actions in front of everybody, you know. Then this one doesn't seem like he's not really like that as as careful. And it's funny how Bomb's actual involvement with Yan Sun is very comical. As you can kind of see, Bomb's like, Yay, I hope my my data actually beats him. Like as if like as if you could tell, like these guys have like a kind of sensei and and student kind of range, like, oh, you know, just oh, just just beat him up, you know. Ugh, I hate this guy. You know. But it's funny. To me it was funny. But anywho. Moving on, folks. Like I said, the balance ecosystem that is there is just there to keep it all in intense. And the thing is that I, I didn't like as well is the fact that, you know, I, I kind of didn't get why Bomb saved his own data self. But I'm guessing that's because probably Bomb's actual, you could say, that's his demeanor, I guess, his characteristics, that he's always being the hero, which is still pretty cool. But then that leads, you know, to another topic, folks, and that is this part, the, 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 you know, the pocket watch that, you know, the characters that when they come in, they gain a second pocket watch. And this pocket watch is kind of like, how do I say, it involves the characters having a good and a bad meter. Like, yeah, like, it, it to me, it felt like, <laughs> like, as if the translator's going to find something to write it with. I don't know, like, that that's, that's how I kind of read it as. Like, basically, the, all the characters inside the hidden floor basically have to do, like, like I said, like, a lot of side quests. It's, it's just like, I'm telling you, this. it feels like it's going to be very long, but I'm hoping that the, the author actually makes this arc a little faster in terms of those little mini side quests that are going to be happening. And that is that if each character does a lot of good actions inside this floor, then the fruit of good and evil is like this giant statue on the floor that they're at, which is, by the way, where Bomb and them are quarantined in. Well, if they do a lot of good things, the statue itself will actually drop them into another floor. But that's if they actually get that this watch and fill it with lots of good actions. You know, it's basically keeping track of how many of they're doing good actions or they're doing evil deeds. Now, if the if the actual characters themselves are doing evil deeds, then you could say that. Then uh, I think I remember what they said. They said. That then the fruit, the the giant statue, the fruit will then actually take them and quarantine them, and they will never see the light of day again. Which makes it, like I said, it's more dangerous as well. I'm telling you, it's just so many little mini intricate little things and qualities that this floor is offering that it makes it very hard at the same time. So technically, anybody that comes into this floor, they they have to go outside the box. They have to work at it. And you know, and you can see that Kuhn and Rack, you know, when they're trying, they they see this giant statue. You see that that Kuhn is actually going about and actually like trying to think like okay i'm trying to find jihad himself so i wonder what other stages that he's at i personally am interested as to wondering like what floor jihad is at he could be at the the first floor for all we know that's just my opinion like i'm just looking at this like where the heck is jihad like why would he be so far deep in the floors inside the hidden floor it's already a hidden floor so why would you be in there even more but that's just my opinion though that's to me, that's freaking hilarious. But anywho, the point is, you know, they got to find Jihad and more of these hidden floors inside the hidden floor. Like I said, it's just hidden floor after hidden floor after hidden floor, which is very hilarious. But moving on, yeah, you know, I'm wondering if Kuhn might actually find Jihad first. Actually, I'm wondering who will find Jihad first. You know, will it be Rachel? You know, will it be actually, uh, how do you say, will it be, 
Wang Nam, you know, like there's still Wang Nam going about, you know, I'm wondering who, has to, who is Rachel's actually greatest enemy too. And by the way, you know, like seeing this chapter, like they're all having their greatest enemies. It makes it wonder like too, who is Rachel's greatest enemy? Will it be, you know, it, it can't be Bomb. Bomb isn't really, she doesn't really see him as an enemy. Since he's more like a nuisance for to, for, for, to, for to me, who would, who would, who would be Rachel's enemy? That's a, that's the biggest question that I personally am wondering right there. But Wow, you know, like I said, lots to talk about in this specific chapter. Lots, lots to talk about. But let me know down in the comments below, guys. So what are you guys' thoughts on this chapter? I, like I said, I personally enjoyed this chapter, but it's just to me, it's just it seems that there's a lot of things going on in this arc that I could tell that that the author himself he's trying to make this this arc long as possible. But I'm giving him process. I do want to know as to what kind of actual qualities this arc will actually involve for the heroes themselves. Because I want to know as to what other actual you, you could say you could say um, information they're gonna they're gonna find. Because to me, this seems more like a like an infil infiltration, like a information infiltration uh, arc itself. Because you know they're trying to find Jihad. Now they're not necessarily there to fight. You know. Which is very funny because One Piece is doing the same thing. They're really there to rescue or etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Like other a lot of other mangas are doing the same thing. But you know, it's very interesting to see how this arc will separate itself from the other arcs. I'm wondering too how Bomb is gonna deal with his own self that he's fighting. Let me know down in the comments as to how you guys thought of that with Bomb seeing himself as his greatest enemy. And what and what are you guys thoughts on the opinion that why did Bomb save himself? And do you guys think that Bomb will move on to the next stage because of the characteristics that how he embodies himself, which I think is very interesting because to me, for Bomb, it would be very easy for him, but at the same time, you know, because he ha he has to, you know. He's, he's that, how do I say, he's too nice that he'll probably get side quested and with another side quest, which is very hilarious that I'm pretty sure Bomb is going to be like that. Or maybe Yang Hansung will actually, you know, divert Bomb from going somewhere else because, you know, Bomb is an irregular and he's actually also there to, you know, to talk to Yang Hansung to do something else. Or maybe Yang Hansung probably has something else in mind for Bomb. Like I said, lots of things to talk about, I'm telling you. But like I said, let me know down in the comments. And as always, guys, if you guys enjoy my content, don't forget to give a like, comment, share, and subscribe for more Tower of God chapter discussions. And as always, guys, hope to see you guys again in the next video. But peace out, folks.